Everyone has been hoping that the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 will be that one flagship chipset that fixes all the issues we have with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But is it the truth? This is the Redmi K50 Pro with the new MediaTek Dimensity 9000 chipset and I'm going to put it against the 8 Gen 1 to find out which is the best Android flagship chipset right now. First, let's take a look at the specs. Now, these are very similar chipsets when it comes to the CPU, but the GPU is different. The 9000 has higher clock speeds, bigger cache, and even though both are built using a 4 nanometer architecture, one is made by TSMC and one by Samsung. There are also differences in camera features, display specs, etc. Now the specs are fine, but let's get to the point. Let's talk about the benchmarks, which will give us a pretty good idea of the Dimensity 9000's performance. So here's the attitude score of the Redmi K50 Pro, the S22 Ultra with 8 Gen 1, and also the H30 Pro with 8 Gen 1. Yeah, I'll be comparing two 8 Gen 1 phones with the K50 Pro. Anyway, you can see that in Android 2, both chipsets are fairly comparable. The Dimensity 9000 beats the 8 Gen 1 in the S22 Ultra on the GPU front, and it beats the H30 Pro on the CPU front. Now here are the Geekbench scores, and this time you can see that the higher clock CPUs on the Dimensity 9000 do make a difference. It beats the scores of both the 8 Gen 1 phones, be it single core or multi core, and it does that quite easily, really. Now, here are the PC Mark scores, and once again, the Dimensity 9000 scores higher. So, from the benchmarks, it looks like the Dimensity 9000 has a faster CPU. I mean, I also noticed the Redmi K50 Pro finished the Geekbench runs faster than the 8 Gen 1 phones, and I also did a video encoding test where I converted the same 1 minute 30 seconds 8K 24 FPS video to 1080p 30fps on all three phones and the Dimensity 9000 phone was the first to finish up. The H30 Pro was second and the S22 Ultra was super slow kind of strangely. So the CPU is faster but I also ran some GPU benchmarks on these phones and the A Gen 1 seems to have a slightly powerful GPU. Here's the 3D Mark Wildlife score of all three phones and you can see the A Gen 1 scoring a lot higher. Here's a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme test and in this test it's a lot closer but again the H30 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is the best. So CPU, Dimensity 9000, GPU, 8 Gen 1. Anyway, the big question is thermal throttling and things kind of get interesting here. So as you guys know, the Dimensity 9000 is built using the TSMC 4 nanometer process while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is built using the Samsung 4 nanometer process. Now TSMC is rated higher when it comes to throttling and battery efficiency, but when I tested things out on the Dimensity 9000, things were slightly different, at least in throttling. So here's the first CPU throttling test, 20 threads, 15 minutes, and as you can see, the Dimensity 9000 started throttling quite a lot very early, as you can see from the graph. The end result was 56% and it's not like this happened one time. I did a 15 minute test again too and again the Redmi K50 Pro throttled the most. The Dimensity 9000 did better in the 50 threads 30 minutes test but it once again throttled quite a lot in the 100 threads 1 hour test. I know a lot of phones struggle in this test and the Agent 1 phones have done similarly but a lot of people are hoping that the Dimensity 9000 would be better here but it's not the case. The throttling performance is similar to the Agent 1. One thing to note though, in all these tests, the Dimensity 9000 mostly had the best performance numbers. So like I said, it clearly has a more powerful CPU. I also tried to do an Antutu throttling test running Antutu consecutively. So I had planned to do 10 Antutu runs on the go, but in the second run itself, the K50 Pro got the overheating prompt and virtually became unusable. Yeah, it was very surprising and the temperatures were also high at around 47, 48 degrees. I also did a GPU throttling test. Here I am running the 3D Mark wildlife test 10 times on all three phones consecutively. And this is the first score of the phones. And after the last test, this was the score. So all of them throttled to get to a similar score. Overall, it's clear that the Dimensity 9000 isn't better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 when it comes to throttling. Now, one area where the Dimensity 9000 is clearly better than the 8 Gen 1 is battery efficiency. I mean, TSMC is known for better battery efficiency and it showed in our tests. The Redmi K50 Pro and the S22 Ultra have a 5000 mAh battery and the S30 Pro has a 4800 mAh battery. So I started the CPU throttling test with all the phones on 100% and after all the three tests that we usually do, the battery drain on the K50 Pro was the least. The S22 Ultra dropped to 61% battery, the H30 Pro dropped to 56% battery and the K50 Pro dropped to 67%. So yeah, it's pretty good. I also did a Geekbench throttling test where I ran the Geekbench 5 benchmark 10 times on the trot and there was no throttling issues in this test. I mean, this is the first score. And this is the last score, but I noticed that the K50 Pro only dropped to 92%, while the S22 Ultra dropped to 85% and H30 Pro dropped to 83%. Yeah, that is a massive difference. 
I did another real world test. We played BGMI on all three phones for around 15 minutes with the display brightness set to max, graphic settings set to HD and high on all the phones. Now we started with all the phones set to 100% and at the end of the gameplay, the K50 Pro was at 91%. Yeah, just lost 9% battery. The S22 Ultra was at 82% and the H30 Pro was at 86%. So one thing is for sure, the Dimensity 9000 is definitely more battery efficient than the HN1, which is kind of a big deal. Also to let you know, I did not find any overheating issues in the Redmi K50 Pro. I mean, there was this one time where it went to 47 degrees, as you guys saw, but apart from that, it was usually normal. I mean, I checked the temperature of the Redmi K50 Pro when the 100 threads test was ending and it was around 42 degrees. I also checked things after the BGMI test and the phone was around 37 degrees, so yeah, it's fine. Now you must have noticed that we are playing BGMI on the Redmi K50 Pro and the other phones on HD and high because that's the maximum that Dimensity 9000 supports right now. So check this out, the maximum graphics the Dimensity 9000 currently supports is HD and high and even if I switch to smooth graphics, there's no support for higher frame rates. I know this is probably because phones with Dimensity 9000 haven't launched globally and BGMI is India specific but the problem is I checked in PUBG Mobile which is available in China and it too has the same max graphics, HD and high, smooth and high. I also noticed the same in PUBG New State too. Agent 1 supports max frame rates and ultra graphics in PUBG New State, while Dimensity 9000 right now supports very high frame rates and high graphics. This is not the case in all games though. Dimensity 9000 supports the same high graphics as the Agent 1 in games like COD Mobile and even in the super intensive Genshin Impact. Apart from this, a lot of people have doubts on MediaTek chipsets in general when it comes to custom ROMs. Gcam mods, but this phone hasn't launched in India or globally, so can't judge that right now. It's time for the verdict now, Dimensity 9000 versus Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is the better flagship Android chipset. Look, I think the winner is the MediaTek Dimensity 9000, although the margin is quite thin if you ask me. I mean, the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 is slightly more powerful when it comes to CPU. The GPU on the Agent 1 is slightly faster, again, not a big difference. But the big deal is that a lot of people have been complaining about the Agent 1's battery issues and the Dimensity 9000 fixes that. The battery performance is a lot better, no doubts. One problem with the Agent 1 it does not fix is throttling. I'd want to test another Dimensity 9000 phone before making a final opinion judgment on the Dimensity 9000, but if the Redmi K50 Pro is any indication, it's very similar to the Agen 1 when it comes to throttling. Another area where I'm a little skeptical about the Dimensity 9000 is game optimizations. BGMI, PUBG are super popular games and on a flagship chipset like this, you don't want to play on low frame rates. The bottom line is the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 is good and I like that MediaTek is finally competing with Qualcomm on the flagship end. It's good news for future Android smartphones. But if you're expecting the Dimensity 9000 to be the ultimate best Android flagship chipset, it's not. But I want to know your opinion on this, so comment down below. Also give this video a like if you liked our efforts. And yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Each one of these have a spy cam in them. Yeah, all of these. I will show you the smallest and the most dangerous.